Uh, this is the entrance to Portiferi Explorus Aquarium. As beside the defended tower house or what they know as Portiferi Castle. And the, the Explorers Aquarium has just had a two million pound refit or refurbishment, and there are is there is lots to see in here. Now I'm thinking that those might be whale bones. I just don't know. Price list here, and it's it is pricey to get in here, mind you. But I suppose uh, uh, for a one-off, a uh, yearly visit, it's not too bad for what you're getting. Talking about strength and love and all the sights to see. 350 million cubic metres of water enters the lock through the narrows and leaves again with each passing tide.
this is the Parrot's Cave. Black tipped reef shark is in here somewhere. Is that what these are? Blue line snappers. And then the ones with the, the, uh, the black stripe down. Trevally. So those are the golden trevallies. Oh, there's the there's the shark there. Now there's the shark away over on the far side. There's the ray coming now. There's the length of the tail. I don't know. Beautiful animal. And these are marvellous with a sort of fluorescent blue stripes. Now this is a honeycomb whip ray. You can see why it's called honeycomb if it turns itself over. Sanctuary. So we've got a seal sanctuary, another enclosure, kids zone, an open ocean tank and rainforest reptiles. Baby seals you can see are orphans or were injured when they came to explore. So we look after them until they can get back to the wild. I don't see any. Oh yes. He thinks he's going to be fed. So Explorus does an amazing job at reintroducing re to the wild uh, uh, these seals, uh, seal pups and they're fully grown whenever they're released so that they can manage for themselves. Otherwise these uh, these babies would die. So if you find one of these along a shoreline all washed up then contact Explorus. Beautiful animal.
mixture of like mackerel, krill, squid, all the stinky foods in the world. Others were in there and tank cleaning. Um, they were worried about the stingray, like coming over and cleaning up the stingray. Uh, but it was actually the Mori eel that started chasing around the tank. So it was like, quite exciting to watch. <laughs> Do they, en do, do they enjoy being stroked? Yeah, that's why they'll come up to the top. Now these guys normally are bottom dwelling rays, so they will normally uh, come up to a surface like this up in Stranford Lock. So this uh, volume of water is considered shallow. So that's why they're up at the top, whereas if you're out at sea and if you're open fishing, you probably wouldn't see these guys up at the top. It's not only that, it's, it's probably rough seas out there, so it wouldn't be as clear to see them. But yeah, and how I can basically tell these guys apart because we do have two males and one female. It's not really that hard. So this wee one here is our female and the other two are males. And how I basically tell them apart is that they don't have anything called clasps at the end of their tail, which are like two little things. So this is our female, so the females don't have that. Whereas the two males you see at the end of their tail there, they have two wee fins. If you want to... So just here? Yeah, so that's how I tell them apart. So those are our two males and then our one female. Now these guys you might notice if you touch them, uh, the top layer where all their eyes are, it's very, very broad. And that's where the thorns are located, so they're called the black rays. They've got those thorns along their eyes, on their back and tail. Whereas underneath they're really, really slimy and squishy. And that's basically because they are hard dwellings. Uh, they'll slide on the seabed, so there's no friction, and then they can just go <laughs> And I wonder, I wonder what's in here. Into the water for him because he will bite. He just, nom, nom. Nah. It doesn't look like it, but oh. he is real, I promise you. He does move. <laughs> he does. He's having a wee bit of a bath there, I think. <laughs> so, this guy is a uh, Nile crocodile. He's the second biggest type of crocodile in the world. I don't think he's alive. <laughs> I wouldn't like to tread. This is a Nile crocodile, and he will grow to 16. 16 feet so they're going to have to get a bigger enclosure for him and he's extremely dangerous. And this section of Explorers deals with uh, conservation and education. It talks about overfishing, ocean acidification, pollution, effect of pollution on wildlife, and here's one of the major problems, cans, plastic cans, plastic, and it's large and small items, and this tells you how long it takes for some of these items to actually break down in the sea. We're talking a crisp packet between 15 and a thousand years to break down. Glass, up to a million years. Fishing line, up to a million years. Uh, a stryophoam cup, infinite, doesn't break down. And then there's oil. Noise sparrows. Be inspired, save our world. Jack Cousteau, the sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever.